Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Coach Ellie. I have more than 14 years of extensive experience in digital marketing. I am an expert in SEO, paid ads, social media, and email marketing. I also specialize in conversion rate optimization. And I also handled a lot of software tools for CRMs and CMS. Um, handled a lot of um, tools for different kinds of digital marketing strategies and tactics. Um, here in Stellar Freelancing Academy, I'm one of the coaches and I also would create modules and courses in Facebook ads and Google ads. And I'm very happy to be part of free Stellar Freelancing Academy so I can share my knowledge and skills not only to as coaches, but of course, to the students who would really en enroll to the courses that we have. So thank you very much all for this opportunity, lalo na kay Coach Maya for this um, opportunity. So yun lang, Coach Maya. Thank you very much. Ah, okay. So um, can you share with them kung ano ba yung perks ng pagiging um, digital marketing assistant or yung pag-work sa ganyang field, ko ano yung perks and ano ba yung career growth and how much ba yung usual na kinikita ng mga ganyan? Yes, um, as a digital marketing um, expert, no, I have been a manager consultant. So usually yung kinikita ko kung nagpo-full-time ako or is ranging around 80 to 150,000. Wow. Pag nagpa-part-time ako, it really depends sa client, no? So, if we have US clients, usually, um, it really depends on experience. I, I'm getting around one five to $2,500. really depends sa client. Sometimes, 1000 If it's Australian, um, mas mababa yung rate na in-offer nila. For part-time, it's really per hour. So, it really depends on the task and the kind of digital marketing task. For example, it could be social media. And if it's a US client, it could be around $8 to $15. No, um, When I started a few years ago, I really started maybe around $5 when I was really um, starting out in this freelancing career, in part-time and contractual work. But as time goes on, I am getting 10 to 15 and right now I'm getting around 15 to 25 dollars per hour. So ni siya pare-pareho, hindi laging may um contract or may gigs ako nakukuha, but I usually get a um, part-time and um for part-time and contract work or full-time. So I also go to online platforms like every one of you sa online jobs, sa Upwork, Meron din sa mga Indeed, kahit sa Job Street. So, lahat ng kind of platforms, um, I'm trying to get it also. Tas LinkedIn is a very valuable tool then to get uh -huh. companies and clients to talk to them also. Um, in the year, in the past years, siguro, um, the main goal and secret of mine is always learning and knowing more about different kinds of strategies and tactics that I really am an expert and I specialize on during the past years. So when I started, I really was, um, if you would really all know, no, siguro mga around, because when I graduated before, mga marketing was really not called digital marketing yet. It was really the start of online marketing. So as years go on, ang digital marketing ay naging part na rin ng marketing itself na parang naging requirement siya. But when I started my career, I was really in tech companies and web 2.0 companies, mga internet companies. That's why I really was specializing already in SEO, in content, in paid ads, in social media, and email marketing. That was really the path that I really was um, um, in. That was really um, maybe sigur, pinilis para sa akin. So, yun lang, Coach Maya, yung masishare ko. Siguro yung um, being an expert in the field, that's why I was really happy to be part of Stellar Freelancing Academy is to also share my knowledge to all and also make sure na parang to create uh, something more out of what I can put in, not only in online, but only, only put, also put in um, different kinds of courses that I can contribute 
to people na what I can really know about certain of what uh, is my experience for the past years. Yun lang po, Coach Maya. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Coach Ellie. Um, tanong ko lang din kung syempre ito yung usual na itatanong nila if ever na mag-venture sila sa digital marketing, ano yung mararecommend mo na starting hourly rate? Siguro, um, as of now, kasi it's 2020, siguro for the mga assistants, for the beginners, they could really take around $5. No? Um, if it really depends on the employer, um, I what I've noticed, if it's really Indians, they usually, the usual start rate ng mga yon is around to two two four dollars ganyan. Pag if it's really US, UK, um Australian, they really start at five to eight dollars. Um, it really depends also on on what kind of skills you can put on the table. Pag mga um I also have an experience in VA, but not like um maybe Coach Maya na talagang more VA na sa, saka project management na mas extensive. Usually, the R rate is nag-range nga ng mga around 3 to 8 dollars. No? Kasi meron talagang skills din na develop din sa VA. For digital marketing, kasi it, it's, really, it's really different. It's more of like the skill set in in SEO, ganyan. So, for digital marketing, it's it's very different. But all, it, pag lahat ay in beginner's mode, usually they all have the same rates. As you go on to be, becoming an intermediate, an expert, or maybe a specialist and a manager, sa kaya nagiging, nag-iba-iba ng rate. Especially kung talaga kayong expert or sabi natin, um, forte, forte nyo talaga yun na um, nagiging consultant na expert na nagbibigay na talaga ng um, advice only for companies na talagang known and very lucrative for others. So, yun lang Coach Maya. Thank you very much. Okay. So, thank you for your input, Coach Ellie. Kung gusto nyo mag-enroll sa ating um, FB or Google Ads course, coming soon na siya. We, we are working towards um, completing that course. And, um, Magkakaroon din tayo ng sarili natin na actually actually yung dati kasi nating SEO ay outside siya ng platform. So since meron na tayong Coach Ellie, gagawa tayo ng sarili nating course. Yung talagang naka-host talaga sa platform natin. So si Coach Ellie din ang gagawa noon. As uh, for as, sa mga nakikita ko, uh, in demand yung SEO kasi yung client ko slash Facebook friend ko na SEO specialist. Ang taas ng kinikita niya eh. I Minsan, mean, 100 plus na yata per hour niya. Dollars. So, napaka-lucrative talaga nung niche na yun. Kaya, um, I'm encouraging din sa inyo, i-add nyo siya sa skill set nyo yung SEO. And itong uh, Google Ads, no? Kasi yung FB Ads medyo... Uh, what, what would you say? Kung ano mas madali, Coach Ellie, yung Google or yung FB Ads? Um, Coach Maya, it depends no sa experience. Kasi ngayon yung Google Ads at sa, ay mas complicated lang kasi gawa ng user interface nila at madami ding terms at saka um, strategies and tactics. Pero pag napag-aralan na kung ngayon yung talagang um, line of work na naging expertise nyo or specialized nyo, um, it really wouldn't be a difference. Siguro yung Facebook Ads Dahil, madam, dahil very familiar tayong lahat doon, um, madami sa aming Facebook ads ang mas madali. Pero pag naging uh, more in-depth kayo sa Facebook ads at more complex sa expert level at saka sa paghahanap, siguro masasabi ko it really varies na lang kung how you use the platform, kung anong magiging um, goal nyo sa niche market nyo or sa companies na hinahawakan ninyo. Siguro for the courses, mabibigay natin na yung beginners, intermediate, expert level. Pero yung how you use really the tool, it's really upon the person itself, no? Kung paano nila ma-apply yun dun sa exactong ginagawa nila para sa kanilang clients or companies itself or sa trabaho nila. Yun lang, Coach Maya. Kasi sa akin din, I find uh, Facebook ads very ano straightforward. Kasi nung nag-start, in-start ko yung Facebook uh, page ng Stellar Freelancing Academy. Nung sinet up ko naman, para sa akin, okay lang siya yung mga usual na 
um, pagsiset up lang. Parang, parang yung mga ginagawa ko sa pagset up ng product listing, ganun, maglalagay ka ng description and then keywords. Tapos, uh, fortunately naman, may mga results naman yung nagawa ko. So, Uh, siguro ang kulang na lang din sa akin yung kaalaman na technical na. Pag sa technical part na ng Facebook ads, hindi ko na siya kabisado. Pero I think it's very easy to learn, no? Yes, Coach Maya. Every, every one naman for us na really willing to learn and really into something could really um, do, do it, no? Could really um, make sure na makakaya nila yung ano especially if they have the courses that we have in Stellar Freelancing Academy tertoong pag natutunan nila tertoong maintindihan at magagawa nila and it's very possible correct so wala talaga impossible if you're willing to learn and determined ka talaga na aralin yung skill na yun no so meron akong pinrepare dito meron kasing nagsuggest kagabi ng topic so meron akong pinrepare dito na slideshow presentation um I'm not sure kung ano um, yung karamihan sa inyo nakapanood na nito pero I think si Lara alam na niya to tsaka si Weng pero for the sake of others yung mga bago nating enrollees i-go over na lang din natin ulit yung paggawa ng portfolio and yung pag-upload and uh, pag-apply ganun. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna share my screen. Let me know kung nakikita niyo ha. Nakikita ba, guys? Kita naman po, ma'am. Yes, coach. Yan. So, short slide lang to para and then, um, mabilis lang din natin mag-go over. And um, I believe alam naman na din yung iba. Pero maganda rin na ano natin sa mga bagong enrollees. Kasi um, yung Lalo na sa mga Amazon VA siguro, hindi ko yata na-include dun yung paggawa ng portfolio. Pero meron kasi akong uh, discover na sarili kong uh, strategies para ma-fill up natin yung portfolio natin kahit wala tayong experience. So, i-run ko na tong presentation. Kita ba guys? Kita naman? Yes, po. Okay, great. So, this presentation is for Amazon VAs or pwede rin sa mga uh, ibang... So, ang goal natin for today is to impress the client, lay out your qualifications in the best way possible, and give out clear expectations of what you can do for the client. Tsaka, syempre, ultimately land the job through dun sa mga portfolio items na gagawin natin. Kasi um, mahirap minsan mag-prove ng, mahirap mag-prove ng uh, eligibility natin or yung skills natin kung wala tayong makitang proof, which is yung, mapakitang proof, which is yung portfolio nga natin. So, uh, paano nga ba natin a-achieve yung goal na yun? Siyempre, una gawin natin una ay uh, do your homework. Mag-research muna tayo about dun sa company ahead of time mag-scroll around tayo sa website nila para makita natin yung products and services na binibenta nila. Uh, pwede rin natin tingnan yung mission statement nila, paano ba nila describe yung company, and um, pwede ka, mas okay to na gawin mo yung mag-research ka ng one or two competitors nila, yung biggest, para makita, makita mo kung meron bang mga strategies yung competitors nila na ginagawa na wala dun sa company na uh, pinag a mo. So, pag nagawa mo tong research na to, you will be better pre prepared for the interview. So, ang next step natin, syempre yung portfolio, isipin mo muna yung background mo. Ano ba yung experience na meron ka na relevant dun sa ina mong role? So, kung meron kang ginawa na similar project or nakapag-work sa industry na similar sa in-applyan mo ngayon, hanapin mo yung mga details na pwede mong i-add sa portfolio and uh, mag-prepare ka rin kung paano mo siya explain to the client, lalo na kung uh, interview na agad-agad. <clears throat> so, kailangan mas related siya dun sa role na ina-applyan mo. Tapos, um, filter mo rin yung mga stories na dapat mo lang i-share kasi hindi naman lahat relevant dun sa ina-applyan natin. 
And uh, mas okay din ko specific tayo, mag-share tayo ng numbers, statistics, and other facts whenever possible. Halimbawa, meron kang uh, na-contribute, kunwari nakapag-raise uh, ka ng sale uh, ng 20%, ganun, na napataas mo yung sale ng company for 20%, uh, mention mo rin yun dun sa portfolio mo. So ano nga ba exactly yung portfolio? Lagi natin siya naririnig. Minsan yung mga newbies, iniisip nila ano ba yung portfolio. So i-define lang natin siya. So a career portfolio goes beyond a resume and a cover letter. So hindi kasi minsan enough na resume and cover letter lang yung isasubmit natin. Ako personally, pagka nag-apply nag, uh, ako, meron akong short cover letter. Tapos sa loob mismo ng cover letter na yun, meron akong link to my portfolio. Uh, dapat yung portfolio natin mag, uh, mag-comprise siya ng work experience, skills, accomplishments, and kung ano pa yung mga relevant na pwede mong i-add dun sa portfolio mo. So dapat may mga information siya about who you are and examples of your work and achievements. So ito na yung mga items na pwede natin i-add sa ating portfolio, lalo na kung wala pa tayong experience or yung mga samples na mailagay dun sa isang folder na yon. Pwede itong statement of originality. Yung statement of originality, in layman's terms, para lang siyang document na nagsasabi na this is my work and um, copying it is prohibited. So parang sinasabi lang niya na um, you own the copyright to these items. Ganun. Tapos yung work philosophy, parang essay lang yan na nagsasabi na this is... Uh, how I work, and I work with integrity, mga ganon. Tapos yung career goals, parang ganon din, i-describe mo lang kung ano yung uh, career goals mo in the next 5 or 10 years, ano yung mga gusto mong i-achieve, mga professional aspirations. Uh, gawin na lang din natin sa isang document na pwede nating ilagay sa online folders like Google Drive. Tapos pinaka-importante, syempre, work samples, uh, kung screenshots, ganyan, mga PDF, or pwede rin mga spreadsheets and kung ano-anong files na pwede nating i-upload online. Tapos hindi lang yung mga tapos na projects natin, pwede rin nating i-upload or isend sa client yung links ng mga work in progress natin. Halimbawa, gumagawa ka ng online portfolio mo sa WordPress, pwede mo isend sa kanila to para uh, mapakita mo sa kanila kung gaano ka kapasyonet sa craft mo. So, pwede rin natin ilagay sa portfolio certificates from university, courses, and other trainings. Halimbawa, nakapag-take na kayo before sa Udemy, ganun. Tapos, kung, ano, kung nakuha nyo na rin yun sa Stellar, sama nyo na lang din dun sa portfolio. So, saan pa natin pwede i-upload yung ating mga um, na-mention kanina? So, sa Upwork, meron, meron siyang section doon na pwede mag-upload ng mga portfolio item. So, ibukod-bukod lang natin siya. Ako ang ginagawa ko one, one category per folder. So, uh, yung mga websites, nakabukod siya, social media images, and then yung mga Canva graphics, mga ganun. Depende kasi yun din sa role na, or yung title mo sa Upwork. Sa LinkedIn, dun sa mga job experiences nyo, pwede kayong mag-add ng images dun. So, pwede niya rin siyang gawin as portfolio. And then, ganun sa Google Drive, gawa lang kayo ng isang main folder. Tapos sa loob ng main folder na yun, gawa kayo ng separate folders. Halimbawa, pag sa Amazon, um, meron kayong folder for product listings, uh, sa mga inventory, uh, inventory reports or sales report. Tapos, uh, meron din kayo dapat sa mga, kunwari nag-run kayo ng PPC campaigns, ganyan, ibukod nyo rin siya sa isang folder. Pwede rin naman sa Dropbox kasi it works the same way naman as Google Drive. So for Amazon VAs, ito yung mga nire-recommend ko na ilagay nyo sa inyong portfolio apart from dun sa na-mention ko kanina. So ito yung mga Excel files of your uh, plot files. May, uh, alam nyo na ba kung ano yung plot files based dun sa ano natin, course? Wala pa po ako sa bandang doon. <laughs> ah, okay. Explain ko lang yung plot files. Yung plot files spreadsheet lang siya na ginagamit yan para mag 
mag-upload ng product listings or mag-update ng product listings in bulk. Kasi minsan pagka yung mano-mano medyo matagal. Pero para sa akin, mas gusto ko yun kasi rito sa plot files. Kasi pag may isang mali mo lang dun sa plot files, kasi may template siya from Amazon, di na download yan. Isang mali mo lang dun, pwede nang mag, ano, <laughs> magkagulo lahat ng listing. So, pero yung iba kasing client, yun ang gusto nila, plot files. Pero pag nagamay mo naman to madali na. Basta careful ka lang. So yan, pwede nyong um, i-upload yan sa Google Drive. Yung spreadsheet na yun na ginamit nyo sa pag-upload ng uh, product listings. And then uh, screenshots of your product listings. Especially kung nakagawa na kayo ng A plus content plus yun sa, sa um, eligibility nyo para makuha yung job. And then yung product descriptions, you've written, pwedeng nasa Google Docs siya, ganun. And then yun nga yung sinabi ko, yung inventory and sales reports. Um, siguro kung may NDA kayong pinirmahan, siguro i-blur nyo na lang or i-hide nyo na lang yung mga um, confidential na information dun sa mga screenshots nyo. Tapos yung competitive analysis, halimbawa inutusan ka ni client na mag-research about, about their competitors sa Amazon, pwede mong i-upload sa Google Drive yung, yung report na nagawa mo. Tapos yun din mga keywords, halimbawa nag-research ka ng keywords sa loob ng Amazon or using a different tool, um, pwede mong i ano din yung i-upload sa Google Drive din yung na-generate mo na report. So, isa, ito pa isa sa mga tanong kung saan daw ba dapat mag-apply or saan ba makakakita ng mga clients pag Amazon BA. So, syempre, alam na natin to. Mag-start tayo sa Upwork, tapos sa Online Jobs PH, sa freeapp.net. Hindi ko lang sure kung na... Um, na-encounter niya na to Pero yung free app, ang hinahire lang nila yung may experience. Pero kung meron naman na kayong background sa freelancing, try nyo dito sa freeapp.net. Tapos yung sinasabi ni Lara kanina sa Golands, sa LinkedIn, meron din dyan mga Amazon sellers na naghahanap ng assistant. Tapos sa mga Facebook groups, um, basta masipag ka lang magtingin-tingin sa mga Facebook groups, maraming nagpo-post ng hiring. Itong home-based Filipino freelancers, ako, ako yung gumawa ng group na to. So, halos everyday maraming nagpo-post ng job hiring. So, join lang kayo. E, e, kahit din nyo nasagutan yung mga questions, accept ko kayo agad. And then yung Upwork Philippines, Upwork uh, Freelancers Philippines, halos makakatulad kasi yung ano nila, yung mga pangalan ng mga group. Pero um, basta masipag lang kayo mag-join sa mga groups, makakita at makakita kayo ng opportunity. So, yun lang yung ating um, presentation. Do you have questions, guys? Pwede na kayo magtanong. Sa, uh, hi, hello po. Sige. You can ask questions. Coach, good afternoon. Ask lang po. Uh, kapag dun mo po, screenshot ng mga spreadsheets, mga flat file, kaya mga reports generated, ibig sabihin po, yung portfolio ay photo file like JPEG, ganun po ba? PNG or okay. GIF. Depende PNG. kasi sa maja-generate ng uh, screen screen grabber nyo. Ang, ako ang ginagamit ko yung snipping tool. Kasi na ano siya, pinakamadali siyang gamitin yung built-in ng ano, Windows. So basically yung portfolio po ay parang collection of photos ng screenshots ng output, hindi yung mismo Excel file, hindi yung mismo Word file. Ganun po ba? Um, kung sa Google Drive ka mag-upload, mas okay na sa halip na Excel file para diretso na pag-click ng client, um, open na nila agad. Um, gawin mo siya sa e-paste mo siya sa Google Spreadsheet. Mm, all right, thank you pa.